very beautiful incident happened in Ramayana. Rama chooses, he says, I don't want to go back to the kingdom and spend some time in the cave of… The others were shocked. Lakshmana, his brother, said, what are you talking about? I want all of you to follow this fundamental principle in the ashram and wherever else you may be. A very beautiful incident happened in Ramayana. Rama, too many unfortunate happenings in his life. He is a king, for some reason he loses his kingdom or he gives up his kingdom, whichever way, or he is conned out of his kingdom or he is too gentle to protest and walks away from it into the jungle, lives a hard life. Then. His wife gets kidnapped by Ravan and then having love for his wife and being despondent about the loss of her and being concerned what could be happening to her, he walks all the way down south, gathers an army of Tamil people. Yeah, who else was in Tamil Nadu? <laughs> and gets across to Sri Lanka, wages a war, defeats Ravan in the battle, slays him. As all of you know, Ravan had ten heads. Yes. With one you are struggling. Hmm? <laughs> he had ten. So Rama went about, you know, ten slaughters so that the man is dead. Battle won, they're coming back to Ayodhya. Rama chooses, he says, I don't want to go back to the kingdom, I want to go to Himalayas and spend some time in the cave of Agastyamani because I want to repent for the great sin that I have committed. I have killed someone who was pious, a great devotee of Shiva, a phenomenal scholar, a great king, a generous man. The others were shocked. Lakshmana, his brother, said, what are you talking about? Ravana kidnapped your wife. So Rama said, see, those are the other nine heads. In these other nine heads of his, he had greed, jealousy, lust, all kinds of things. But there was one head which had great wisdom, knowledge, piety, devotion. I regret taking that head. I would have liked to leave that head alone, not kill the man, but there was no way to do it, so I had to do this. But I am in great repentance because I took away that one head. What this is trying to tell you is, all of you have ten or more heads, all kinds of things. Do you see? One day your head is in greed, another day, another day in jealousy, another day in hatred, another day in love, another day in beauty, another day in ugliness. Yes or no? Yes. Or the same day you go through everything. <laughs> if I see you, in a moment 
of jealousy. I said, this is a jealous one. If I see you in a moment of greed, I said, this is a greedy one. If I see you in a moment of hatred, I said, that is a hateful one. If I see you in a moment of lust, I said, that's a lustful one. No, no. Everybody has ten and more heads. Yes. At different times, different heads are working. But everybody has head, at least one head of love, beauty, generosity, compassion, at least one head. There is... So the biggest mistake you do in your life is that instead of identifying and condemning a quality, you condemn an individual person. This is what Rama is trying to say. It doesn't matter, he did so many horrible things. Those are the other nine heads, but that one head I saw of tremendous possibility. But unfortunately, I had to take that. I want all of you to follow this fundamental principle in the ashram and wherever else you may be, that if you see something wrong in somebody, we will only condemn that. Yes. Not him or her. Namaskaram. Welcome to our channel. Today, we will delve into how the epic tale of Ramayana traveled to China and become a part of its culture and literally landscape. The Ramayana, one of India's greatest epics, is not only a literary masterpiece, but also a religious, political and ethical text. Its influence extends far beyond India reaching even China. The spread of the Ramayana to China coincided with the eastward movement of Hinduism and Buddhism. Early Buddhist texts in China dating back to the 3rd to 6th centuries included stories from the Ramayana but with Buddhist elements. Three Jataka stories, King Dasharatha, Monkey King and Shambhuka are among the earliest texts that tell Ramayana like tales in a Buddhist context. These stories through varied in details kept the essence of the Ramayana alive in China. The King Dasharatha Jataka closely mirrors the original Ramayana tale, except it omits the 14-year exile of Ram. The story of adapted to fit the Buddhist narrative, showing how the Ramayana was molded to locate beliefs. In the Monkey King Jataka, Rama is depicted as a bodhisattva, a being destined for enlightenment. This version introduced more variations such as a sea dragon replacing Ravana and the setting shifting to a Buddhist backdrop. The Shambhuka Jataka narrates the story of Shambhuka, but from a Buddhist perspective, it explains why Rama's father punished him for killing Shambhuka, adding another layer to the Ramayana's complex narrative. Chinese scholars like Jin Kemu and Zi Zaleng played a crucial role in studying and translating these texts. Jin Kemu explored the connections between Buddhist texts and the Ramayana, while Zi Zalelin translated the Ramayana from Sanskrit into Chinese during the Cultural Revolution. Zi Zalelin's translation of the Ramayana in the 1980s was a monumental achievement. Despite the political turmoil of the Cultural Revolution, he dedicated nearly a decade to translating the epic, making it accessible to Chinese traders. Different religions in China adopted the Ramayana to their local traditions. The Dai version, known as the Lang Ka Sip Ho, and Tibetan and Mongol versions, all have unique elements while retaining the core story. The Dai people of human have their own version of the Ramayana called Lion Ka Sip Ho. The version includes unique characters and local settings such as Dragon's Cave instead of Ashoka Vatika and different names for the main characters. The Lion Ka Sip Ho divided into five parts. The first four parts closely follow the Ramayana pilot, while the fifth part, a decay creation, introduce a new elements like uh, 
Tasu Lama choosing a queen for his son and fighting with the Mongus God. These localized versions illustrate the flexibility and complexities of the epic. The Tibetan and Mongol versions of the Ramayana were influenced by local political and cultural contexts. These adaptations often emphasized moral and ethical lessons, aligning with Buddhist teachings prevalent in these regions. The Mongol version, similar to the Tibetan one, showcase how the epic was used to highlight the virtues like loyalty and righteousness. In contrast, the Cotonese version for Zingzang depicts Ravana begging for amnesty, reflecting different cultural interpretations. The Ramayana influenced to various aspects of Chinese culture, especially in regions like uh, Zanjing and Yomna. It was used to promote Buddhist teachings and values such as uh, morality and loyalty. Chinese Buddhist texts uh, like the Buddha Charita and the Mahavibhasa Sutra contains references to the Ramayana Zanjang's travels during the Tang dynasty further solidified the epic's presence in Chinese literature. The Ramayana's journey did not stop in China. It continued to spread to Southeast Asia's countries like uh, Thailand, uh, Myanmar, Java and Malaysia, where it was translated into local languages and incorporated into local traditions. Chinese source mentions the 6th century stone tablet in Cambodia referring to the Mahabharata. By the 9th century, the Ramayana was well established in Southeast Asia, influencing local cultures and narratives. In recent years, more direct translations of the Ramayana into Chinese have emerged. Scholars continue to explore and study the epic, recognizing its enduring value. Mai Wenkai's 1950 prose translation and uh, Sun Yung's 1962 translations were among the first modern efforts. Ji Zhengzheng's comprehensive translation in 1984 marked a significant milestone, followed by numerous scholars who have since contributed to Ramayana stories. Understanding the journey of the Ramayana to China reminds us of the deep culture connections between India and China. These shared stories highlight the universal lessons of the Ramayana, promoting values of duty, honor, and righteousness. The integration of the Ramayana and Chinese cultures shows how stories transcend borders, fostering mutual understanding and respect. As we reflect on these connections, we appreciate the rich tapestry of our shared heritage. Sadhguru's important message to non-Hindus. Click here to watch the video now. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey through history. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel for more insightful stories. Pranam.